After three years, what's our assessment of this Arvika bike rack? Stay tuned to find out. Hey folks, Day Hiker from the Six here, coming to you from beautiful Mew Lake Campground in Algonquin Park. For those of you not familiar with Arvika, they've been around since 1999. They're a bike rack manufacturer out of Quebec, which is in Canada. They make front-mounted racks for virtually all styles of travel trailers, including some of the oddball ones like Airstream, New Camp, and of course Safari Condo. They also make a bike rack that you can put on the back of your car on the receiver. So this rack has an 80 pound capacity, although the ones that they're selling on their website now are around 160 to 200, I think because of everybody wanting to use the heavier e-bikes. In this video, I'm going to take you through unloading the bikes, how to load the bikes, I'll show you how it's attached to the trailer, and then we'll go through the pros and cons of this rack, and we'll give you our final verdict on whether we would recommend it or not. So we're gonna start by unloading the bikes. Make sure you take any locks that you have off before you start, because you don't wanna be sort of halfway lifting it off and then realize that you have a lock. So I've gotten rid of my bike lock. And I'm also going to unlock the lock that comes with the bike rack, just again, so get it done at the beginning and that way we don't have to worry about it. Well, so basically when this thing is locked, this freewheels and it won't allow you to loosen the bike and take it off. And then now that it's unlocked, it actually does back out so it'll loosen. All right, so the first step to taking the bikes off is to undo these straps. And you wanna make sure you do that before you take the support arm off. Okay, so the two straps come off and I always just hang them here just because I don't wanna just put them down any old place and forget about them and because they're attached, they can't disappear kind of thing. So we do that. And now we're ready to undo the support arm. So I'm just going to back it off until it's nice and loose. Hold the bike with one hand and just move this guy out of the way with the other hand. I think being tall is probably an advantage for this. Uh, and that's it. And the bike comes off. Now it's going to be exactly the same process for the second bike. We're just going to take off the straps. This one doesn't have a lock on it, so you would just back it off and then pull the bike off. Uh, for the demo, I'm just gonna do it with the one bike. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you, while we've got rid of one bike, how this thing mounts to the trailer. So as you can see, they've got it bolted onto this platform on our trailer, and then it actually connects to the front of the trailer. It looks like it might actually be riveted in there. And then you have this support bar coming up just to create the triangular support. Now keep in mind this one was installed at the Safari Condo factory. If you were to order one of these racks for a trailer with a more standard A-frame, uh, there's no drilling involved. It simply just clamps onto your A-frame back there and then it will have a clamp support right up at the front so it's a much simpler setup. All right so now we're going to show you how to load which is just the same thing in reverse. The only nuance is the very first time that you use the rack, you will have to set up these, I'm gonna call them wheel stoppers. So what you're gonna do the very first time is just loosen them, move them all the way to the inside. Okay, and then we can lift the bike back up. Now with the bike, make sure that you're doing uh, handlebars on opposite sides, okay? And so I'm just gonna get it where I think it looks roughly centered. And then I'll just slide these in. And now they're adjusted, so that kind of keeps the bike from moving side to side. And we'll just pull the arm down and then tighten that one as well. Now, one thing I should point out, especially you know when you're installing the first bike, um, make sure that both of these arms are out of the way. <laughs> There's nothing worse than getting it up there and then realizing that you have to take it back down again in order to get that arm flipped to the back. So now that it's back on, we're going to use our straps to strap the wheels. So the bike is not secure unless you use these straps. It's basically just sitting there, but it could flop up and down uh, when you went over bumps. and there's the other one. Uh, one of the things that I really love about this is that it's just super easy to put the bikes on and off and they don't contact each other in any way. So the, the channels are far enough apart 
that uh, you know there's no rubbing between the bikes. I have two racks that just go into the receiver of my car and both of those it seems like always no matter how careful you are a couple of bikes end up rubbing together and you end up with scuff marks and so on so that won't happen with this rack. Uh, another thing I should point out is you know we have fairly narrow tires on our bikes but they do make three different widths of channels so you can you can do fat bikes uh, you can do something with a little bit more of an aggressive mountain bike tire uh, so there, there are three channels they're very easy to uh, change out as well one minor inconvenience i should point out is that to take the propane tanks out you have to remove the bikes and you actually have to undo a couple of wing nuts and pull those bolts out and then this just flips up uh, so if you're on the road and you're just stopping to get some propane while you're in between campgrounds that can be a bit of a pain generally to get around that what i do is i just i'll get propane you know in the middle of a stop and i'll just take the propane tank off throw it in the car and take it to the place rather than doing it while we're actually in transit so that's one thing to keep in mind with it so before we get to the pros and cons i do have a little favor to ask if you are enjoying this content you're finding it useful please hit like and leave a comment below and consider subscribing any one of those three things but especially the like and the comment really help with the algorithm and they'll help us to grow the channel and to bring you more content like this now let's go through the pros and cons Pro number one is it's super easy to load and unload bikes. I can have the bikes on the rack and locked in less than five minutes. It's just so much easier than my hitch mounted racks where it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle because the bikes are so close together. Pro number two, bikes don't get damaged. The bikes don't touch and they don't rub against each other. And no matter how careful I was with those hitch mounted racks, I always seem to end up with another scuff or scratch. With this one, it's all good. Pro number three, bikes are very secure. I see the bikes in my rear view mirror and I'm always surprised how little movement there is. I think it comes down to the fact that the front of the trailer is mo the most solid part of the trailer. The bikes just don't get tossed around as much at the front as they would at the back. Pro number four, it comes with a lock. Hey, I'm not saying that this is enough to stop a very determined thief, but every deterrence possible is a good thing. Pro number five, super responsive customer service. Unfortunately, I've had two occasions that required me to order parts for the rack, and I can say that the service on the phone and the quickness they got the parts out to me was absolutely top-notch. Great service seems to be getting rarer and rarer, so I really appreciate this aspect of Arvika. Of course, the fact that I've had to order some parts segues nicely into the first con, and that con is tow vehicle bike rack interference. Now, it's never happened to me, but it did happen once to one of my renters. Uh, depending on the tow vehicle and the hitch, the bike rack can hit the tow vehicle on abnormally sharp turns. Now in the case of the renter, there was plenty of clearance and I think they just jackknifed the trailer completely when backing it up. So I'd chalk it up to towing inexperience in that case. The good news is Arvika was great about getting the replacement part out to me. It was easy to change it. And I should note that on trailers with bigger A-frames than our tiny trailer, which is almost all trailers, uh, this likely wouldn't be an issue. Con number two is tongue weight. Um, our tongue weight with everything you see here is 385 pounds and that's with loading the rear of the trailer to balance some of the weight out. About 110 pounds of that is the bikes and the bike rack. So if you're close to your receiver's maximum tongue weight, it might be a deal breaker for you. In our case, we sneak in just under the limit. Con number three is there's lots of little pieces to lose. As you saw in the video, there's lots of straps and there's connectors, there's nuts and bolts and everything. And in our case, one of these wheel stopper handles did actually fall off, as I mentioned earlier. Again, Arvika was really great about getting uh, one, and they actually couriered it to us really quickly, uh, so it didn't cause too much inconvenience. But that is a bit of a con, just all of these little pieces. So it's time for the final verdict. All in all, I recommend getting an Arvika Brack. They're solid, easy to use, they keep the bikes secure and damage free, and I also love the responsiveness of Arvika when you need support. And if you're thinking of getting one for your RV, just make sure you pay attention to your tongue weight. If you like this video, check out our other gear reviews. I'll link reviews to our barbecue and dining tent bug shelter on the screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.